Okay, so today I want to discuss the Court of Appeals decision there in the Enoch Burke appeal. Enoch Burke was appealing in the Wilson's Hospital dispute two High Court decisions. Both of them ordered him or prohibited him from attending the school, Wilson's Hospital School, the place of his employment. And he appealed those decisions to the Court of Appeal. These are high court orders made by two different judges. He said that they were unconstitutional, unlawful, illegal, and so on and so forth. But the Court of Appeal dealt with the appeal today. Uh, insofar as they issued their decision today, they had a hearing a few weeks ago, uh, maybe 10 days to a fortnight ago was the hearing. And uh, there was three judges, there's Justice John Edwards, there's Justice Mary Whelan, and there's Justice George Birmingham, who's the President of the Court of Appeal. Now, the three decisions issued by the three separate judges are in agreement. They all agreed to dismiss Enoch Burke's appeal against the High Court orders. I have published those three decisions in the interest of fairness and in the interest of or for the interests of people who may want to look at the reasons as to why Burke's appeal was dismissed. I know that the whole issue of transgender rights and the issues uh, in this case according to Enoch Burke generate a lot of heat and uh, not much light quite frankly but I hope that publishing the three decisions on my website employmentrightsireland.com will help you, help anybody who's interested, genuinely interested in finding out why his appeal has been rejected by all three judges. Employmentrightsireland.com on my YouTube channel I'll put a link underneath this video, uh, a link to that blog post and you can read the three decisions yourself. But for this video, I am not going to touch on the absolutely disgraceful, unprecedented carry on and behavior which saw more Gardaí and more policemen uh, landing at the forecourts since uh, 1916 in order to remove six Burks, four of them uh, children uh, of, of parents, Sean and Martina. So they were all forcibly removed from the Court of Appeal and uh, removed from the four courts complex. I'm not going to go into that, you'll have seen it probably on the news and you'll probably see it on social media, you'll see it on Twitter and so on. There's plenty of graphic stuff there. What I am going to do though is I'm going to read the decision of the President of the Court of Appeal and it'll give you a good idea as to why the decision was arrived at. As I say, if you want to look at the full decision of the President and the other two judges, Justice John Edwards and Justice Mary Whelan, well then, no difficulty. I'll put a link under this YouTube video and you can check it out on my blog post uh, on employmentrightsireland.com. According to George Birmingham, discussion and decision, he says, J. Barrett, that's uh, Justice Barrett, uh, High Court Judge, uh, and J. Roberts, as another High Court judge, considered what was involved in identifying where the balance of convenience lay as involving the balance of the impact of the suspension on the appellant against the disruption caused by him in failing to comply with the direction from the board that he stay away from the school while on paid administrative leave. So that's the suspension of Enoch Burke as part of an investigation, as part of a disciplinary process which was in accordance with the circular letter issued from the Department of Education. The appellant, that is Mr. Burke, says both judges were in error in understanding, or understating rather, or minimising the seriousness of what was in reality a suspension. He points to the fact that the courts in other cases have recognised the serious impact that a suspension may have. That's true, a suspension may have a very serious impact on an individual and people may look in and say, oh, that person has been suspended from that job even though it's a paid suspension, even though there's no adverse finding, there's no smoke without fire and so on. But Mr Justice George Birmingham goes on to say, I've already indicated that I do not disagree with the view that suspension is a serious matter and certainly not something to be resorted to lightly. I want to make clear my views in that regard 
extend to so-called holding suspensions and even those suspensions that are on full pay. However, it does seem to me that the impact of suspensions will vary from case to case. There will be cases where the background to the suspension brings immediately to mind the adage of no smoke without fire. In such cases, the effect of the suspension is likely to be very grave indeed and may not be easily or at all remedied, even if the individual suspended is eventually vindicated. I do not believe this is such a case. The attention this controversy has received means there can be few people in the educational world in Ireland who will not be aware of the background to the suspension and very few who could be under the misapprehension that it relates to other forms of grave misconduct. So he's making the point there that it's clear why Enoch Burke was suspended by Wilson's Hospital School. He goes on to say this is a case where the principal and the board have come to a view about what is the appropriate response to a situation with which they were presented. The appellant takes exception to the course of action decided upon by the school and has repeatedly expressed his objections. While the stage 4 report prepared by the principal refers to the appellant's actions at the staff meeting, the focus of attention at the various High Court hearings and before this court has been very much on what happened on the occasion of the chapel service and dinner. It also seems to me to be a relevant consideration that the appellant has given the clearest possible indication of having every intention of conducting himself in a similar manner into the future. In the course of his submission to Barrett J, the appellant indicated that, having had much time to consider his actions and behaviour, far from finding any instances of misconduct, let alone gross misconduct, he has only found actions worthy of commendation. He asserts it is to be commended that he had the courage to respond to the principal, telling her that her transgenderism was an abuse of children and a breach of their constitutional rights to the free profession and practice of their religious beliefs, as the Constitution says. When asked the direct question by me whether, even at this stage, he has any regrets about interrupting a religious service, his response was to say he felt he was to be commended for what he did. It also seems to me to be the position that the position of the child at the centre of the controversy requires consideration in the context of identifying where the balance of convenience lies. With parental support, the child indicated a desire to transition. In those circumstances, while it is not inconceivable that an accommodation satisfactory to all could have been reached, given goodwill and flexibility on all sides, it would seem at this stage, given the attitude taken by the appellant, that it is not possible to meet simultaneously the desires of the child and the parents on the one hand and the appellant's concerns on the other. If that is the choice, and I am afraid that by reason of the appellant's actions it may well have in fact come to that, I would be of the view that the wishes of the child and parent parents must prevail. So he's saying there that if that is the choice choice between the desires of the child and parents on the one hand and Mr. Burke's concerns on the other, then he says that I would be of the view that the wishes of the child and parents must prevail. I turn now to the observation by Barrett J, that's the High Court judge, that this case was not about transgen transgender issues, remarks echoed, or certainly I suspect in the mind of the appellant, by the remarks of Roberts J, another High Court judge, that there was no attack on the religious beliefs of the appellant. I am of the view this case is not about what the appellant has chosen to describe as transgenderism, and I would prefer to express my views in terms of the fact that the case is not about transgender rights. I cannot but believe that the term, as used by the appellant, is a somewhat pejorative one, as is his use of the term transgender ideology. These are phrases I prefer to avoid. I do not believe they are phrases that in today's Ireland would find favour with transgender individuals and I would wish to respect their preferences in that regard. In relation to the suggestion that there has been an attack on the appellant's religious beliefs, I think it necessary to recall the circumstances in which this issue arose. A pupil in the school, along with the child's parents, informed the school authorities of a decision that had been arrived at and sought the support of the school. The school was therefore presented with a choice to respond positively or to reject the request. If the request was rejected, 
it would, involve, it would involve saying that the school would be a cold house for the pupil involved. The school authorities took the position that the pupil would be facilitated and that the ethos of the school required that this be so. He goes on to say then that while the identification of the ethos of the school is a matter for the school authorities and maybe a matter that arises for consideration at a full hearing, I feel bound to say that I do not find the approach of the school at all surprising. It seems to me that the approach of the school is very much in accordance with wider public policy as articulated in legislation such as the Gender Recognition Act of 2015. That act is not directly applicable in the circumstances of this case as the pupil involved, being under 18 years of age, has not applied for and is not in a position to apply for a gender recognition certificate. However, it is part of the statute law of the state and is, to a degree, I believe, declaratory of public policy. The long title of the act is that it is an act to recognise change of gender, to provide for gender recognition certificates, to amend the Irish Nationality and Citizenship Act 1956, the Civil Registration Act 2004, the Passports Act 2008 and the Adoption Act 2010 and to provide for matters connected therewith. Against the background of the statute law of the state, it seems clear to me that the decision of the principal and of the school is in no sense an outlier. In summary, I am of the view that the appeal against the decisions of J. Stack and Barrett J. must be dismissed. I would like to add that I have had the opportunity to read in draft form judgments that will be delivered by Edwards and Whelan J.J. shortly and I wish to record my agreement with them. The three court, uh, court of appeal, the three judges in the court of appeal are of a similar view. They would all dismiss the appeal of uh, Enoch Burke and that is the position. They're also of the view that the high court judges in finding that transgender issues were not, transgender rights were not the issue at the heart of this, they agreed with that finding of the High Court judge and basically the Court of Appeal has found that there is no attack and no infringement on Mr Burke's right to practice any religion that he chooses, there's no attack or effect on his constitutional rights, all we're talking about here is the right of the school to suspend an employee in circumstances where they wish to carry out an investigation and a disciplinary process in accordance with the relevant disciplinary procedure as set out by the Department of Education. It's a circular letter from 2018 and it is in operation in schools up and down the country and the Court of Appeal has agreed with the High Court judges that this case is not about transgender rights not about transgender issues, not about Enoch Burke's right to uh, profess a religion or practice a religion, not about his right to constitutional right to profess a religion. It is about the right of the school to actually organise and manage their affairs and make choices. And in this particular situation, when faced with the choice of the desire of the child and the child's parents on the one hand, and Mr Burke's views on the other hand, the school uh, chose to side with the child and his parents and the uh, president of the Court of Appeal has found that he would have uh, made the same decision because of the statutory backdrop, the Gender Recognition Act of 2015 and because of the public policy, the public policy aspirations that are clearly set out in the Gender Recognition Act of 2015 and the uh, decision, as it were, of the legislature to put that uh, legislation on the statute books. Hope you find this video useful. Uh, give it the thumbs up down below if you do and um, be interested to see your comments. But, you know, I would encourage you and ask you to actually read at least one of the decisions. They're not very long, but they're very, very useful. and. Uh, Mr. Justice George Birmingham's decision is well worth a read. There's two other decisions there as well from, as I said, John Edwards uh, and uh, Mary Whelan. And they are both on my website, employmentrightsireland.com. It's in a blog post. Just click the link and have a look. Read it yourself before you get up on your high horse and go bananas about what's this country coming to and so on and so forth. Thanks a lot.